Hi everyone. So we're going to do a little exploration of our soldering adventure here. Uh, and full disclosure, I tried this soldering three times to get to here. And each time I had the same event happen, which is that although the solder was always happy to flow for a little more than half of the length of the slot, for some reason it wasn't flowing on this side. And first I thought it was uh, maybe we were too close to the vise and there was a heat sink issue on this side, but that turned out to not be the case. I tried it a, a couple of different ways. So now we have a result which I think is okay. I mean, I'm seeing flow up here, flow along the length of this, but I can't be exactly sure that we have the penetration of solder that we wanted down here. And I did a bunch of reading online and talked to some uh, friends who are more practiced at this than I am. And Everybody said, oh yeah, cast iron, good luck. Let me just show you some of the luck I've had with cast iron. These are a bunch of other spoke shaves that I, I made a whole lot of these some years ago. And you can see that all of these have an added piece that were soldered in and they all soldered beautifully. I never had any kind of trouble getting penetration. Here's one that's finished over here. And you can see, I believe that there's just a, there's a perfect joint here. There's no evidence of any gap or openness. And in fact, there needs to be solder in between the, the parts in order to bond it because otherwise there isn't any bonding agent. So there was always a tiny little gap, in, but it's been filled so perfectly by the solder that you can't see it. And then we can look at these other projects. These are three examples and we could look at these sometime. These are a, a commercially available casting for these little finger planes with a handle, spoon bottom planes I guess, or spoon planes. And because the throat openings were crude and or the bottoms weren't the shape that I wanted. I soldered on a piece of bronze on the bottom in order to get a little bit longer bed and um, to be able to shape it the way I wanted and to get the throat opening small the way I wanted the throat opening. These are not iron, so these soldered beautifully with the same solder, of course. These are all done with the same silver bearing solder. And here's a, a much bigger part. This is a Stanley box scraper that we'll, we'll look into at some point. But on this tool, which had a curved bottom, I wanted more curve than I could get out of the material that I had to work with. And so we soldered on a base plate and then machined the base plate to get a a smaller radius arc on the bottom of this and I think this one turns out to be yeah it's about nine and a half inches arc radius. The solder works great, the method is great and we suspect that the problem with with this part was that there's some kind of inclusion or contaminant in the surface of this casting right over here that made it difficult for the flux and the solder to uh, work together and wet out this part of the surface. So we'll find out a little bit more when we curve it today. We're going to put a transverse convex curve on this blade in both directions. Uh, in order to get it to be the correct curved surface for working on arch top plates. And when we do that, we'll get down into this joint a little bit. We'll see a little bit more about what we have. My sense is that there's plenty of material in here bonding it all together and it won't be an issue, but we'll find out. And I just wanted to be honest with you about the occasional problems of soldering to cast iron, which is um, 
not a perfectly homogeneous material in, in a casting any kinds of contaminants can get introduced. So we saw on, on this little decal that was here, <laughs> well here you can see it on this one, it says malleable iron which is also called ductile iron and I looked it up and there are um, graphite nodules that are introduced into the iron to give it some elasticity, that is toughness, um, to prevent it from being so brittle. And it's possible that those graphite nodules can be a problem. I just don't know and I couldn't find out in my internet search. So it's a little bit of a puzzlement. Please, if any of you know anything more about this, please make a comment and, and inform us, okay? So next time we're going to be putting a curve on this surface and um, we're going to get pretty close to this, this uh, uh, tool which I think is very nearly ideal for the purposes of carving an arch top plate. All right, next time. Now we've got to try and figure out how we're going to hold this on the belt sander in order to get our curb on the bottom of the sole. When we look at this, the way it's sitting, the way it naturally wants to sit, we see that the bottom isn't perfectly square and it doesn't need to be perfect, but let's try and get it closer than that. So let's see. We put a couple of shims together. This is a total of um, 1.45 millimeters or 58 thousandths. I'm going to put that under there and I think you can see that we've got a pretty good reading here on the square. So 58 thousandths Here's a piece of brass plate, it could be anything. This is uh, 62 thousandths. We're gonna call that close enough and we're gonna stick it down to the table of the sander uh, with a clamp and we'll see how we can see, see what kind of job we can do on the bottom of this, uh, on the bottom of this spoke shave. I put a new 60 grit belt on this, which will make very quick work of this, although nothing easy about cutting cast iron. We don't want to get this super hot for obvious reasons. We're using low temperature melting solder, so we'll be careful not to get it too hot. And we're going to aim for a 20 inch arc radius on this tool. See what we get. So the whole idea here is that this is the right shim. Remember, this is the right shim size here to keep to keep this face reasonably square to the belt. And so we're going to have to remember to press down in the middle and be careful not to uh, let it lift. Okay, ready? All right, we can see that um, we've got good squareness. We can see grass is going across, so we're in the neighborhood.
Okay, we're a little bump over here. Almost done. That looks quite good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the blade in here and come back and uh, rough out the blade. We're gonna put this together with the blade and take a roughing cut on the blade. So first we'll put some wax on these adjusters. Hmm. Any candle will do, really, but this is canning wax from the grocery store. And then um, this will help, uh, help it get everywhere and coat everything. All right. So we'll want this to project out the bottom as short a distance as we can, so something kind of like that. And we see here that from, from this side of the screw to this side of the cavity, we got lots of room for years of sharpening. And let's see, I guess we'll use, this one says record. It's got a, a real sloppy, poor quality knurled thing. It won't really matter that much, I don't think. Um, but if you want, you can drill it out and tap it a different size, put in a bigger fastener this one seems to be okay, I guess. All right, now that we're clamped in, we'll just try and dial in the, the smallest projection we can of the iron in the center and try and get it even side to side of course, this is the, the beauty of this design is that each side is adjustable independently so we can get the blade exactly where we want left to right, which, which is necessary. And I submit that these, this has got to be the simplest way to get there. You only have one, two, three, four threaded fasteners and you've got a huge amount of control over where the blade is and the uh, angle that the blade makes to the body of the tool. I think that's pretty good. All right, so now we're going to go back to our and 
going to go back to our belt sander setup and uh, rough in the curve of the blade. The final step looks good. Looks very good. So ultimately you can decide whether you want to ease, so-called ease, these sides over here. The body of the tool outside of the blade isn't really referring to anything important. So if we want, we can roll this curve off a little bit on both sides, which will give us um, a little more access to certain parts of the guitar, perhaps. But we can do that with a file, which is how we're going to shape the rest of this. We're going to shape the rest of this by hand with a file and sandpaper, because the belt sander is just too aggressive. And now that we've got a nice curved surface, the scratches aren't too big. And happy with the way this came out. We're going to go to the next step with a file and sandpaper. So this is the curved surface that we got on the belt sander. And we're going to see what we've got here. Okay, it looks like it's 20 inches radius arc. All right. So let's, uh, let's see how that works. We're going to try that. So now we need to develop a curve in the other direction. And we'll need to um, figure out how to do that by hand because it's too scary to do this by machine. Just can't see worth a darn. And you wouldn't want to mess it up at this late date. So we're going to apply some, some, some magic marker. And here I have a, a fairly coarse single cut file. It's a delta. It says pillar file. Okay. <laughs> See how this cuts. All right. So the thing about filing is that you want to try and use the whole file. So I'm trying to start at one end and use the, all the teeth in the file from one end to the other. Right? So that's important. Oops, slipped. Again, I've got this um, piece of hard plastic in here, polycarbonate, that I've cut in such a way so that I can hope to get a good grab on this, which is really the only way I've figured out how to hold on to these things. So we're going to have a quick look here and see what we've what we've created so far and maybe we'll try and just hold this to a pretty 
pretty short arc. Let's look at this. So that's kind of, that's 14. And we're almost there, really. These aren't big curves. So we're going to You can always take off more. <laughs> We're going to take off just a little bit. And of course, the length of the cutting bed from here to here, uh, obviously very short. And um, we're going to depend on this shape to help keep the tool from chattering or stuttering in the cut. So we don't want it to be too round. And we're gonna okay, so we have a little a little nick in here we wish we didn't have. I'm gonna work on that. follow up with just a little bit of sandpaper <laughs> 320 paper okay here so this is this looks really good at 14 so I think we're going to stick with that for now that looks pretty great and as you can see this <laughs> didn't take very long because there's not a whole lot of material to remove but anyhow there it is now here's the blade that we had in there just before now when we were sanding this surface to a curve, transverse curve, and you can see that we've curved the blade as well. Doesn't look like it's perfectly symmetrical. Looks like a little bit more came off this side than that side. That isn't really a big problem. But we're going to mark this up with the black magic marker and go to the grinder and uh, try and get a, a nice cut on the bench grinder with this. Okay, so here we are at the grinder, nice pedestal grinder. And we're gonna, uh, you don't have to do this, but it'll make it easier for the camera to see it. You can certainly see where the grinding wheel is touching without the benefit of magic marker, but what the heck, it's fun. And then here to find out where we're at, we're going to just rotate the wheel by hand. And we see it's pretty close to what Veritas ground, which isn't too surprising since that's what this <laughs> mostly what I do with this side of this grinder is grind edge tools so it's not surprising that it's it's set for something like 25 degrees um, but we'll just see if we can't get it a little closer to the original um, bevel that Veritas supply. Oh, there we go. Right in the middle. So we're happy with that. That's easy. Now, here's what's not easy. We're going to grind this, of course, with the bevel down. 
and we don't have a whole lot of clue. We can't see what we're doing when the bevel is down. So we're going to have to, to check. Now, we know that we're going to be taking off a lot more at the ends than in the middle. And we're just going to have to be really careful. So here we go. Of course, probably everybody knows that it's important not to get the tool too hot uh, because it will soften the tool or take the temper out of the tool, so to speak. And one way to make sure that doesn't happen is just to put your flesh <laughs> right up against that tool and if it's too hot to hold, it's too hot. You need to cool it off in some water. But we're taking light cuts. We're going to be patient. We're not taking off a lot of material. We don't expect it to get super hot. So what I'm going to try and do is get a nice even land all the way down from one end to the other. And you can see I'm just working on this left side right now. Okay, I hope you can see that there's a um, pretty even land from here to here. And now we're going to go work on this end of the tool and try and get that land to be even all the way across. A little warm. I hope you can see this up close. You can see the land is thicker on this side, so I'm going back to work on here. I'll look at the end. I've, I've already come pretty close at the end, so I'll stay away from there. Mostly working right inside here to try and even up that land. Stay away from the corner. But one thing about the grinder that's nice is that you can watch the sparks come off the wheel and right across the back of the tool. And it gives you a real good idea of exactly where on the wheel the steel is touching. 
So, okay, good. So one little cut in here, and we're almost done. That looks pretty good. Almost done. Now that's great. So we've got to even land all the way across. Okay, and now we're going to go stone it and see what we can do.